day. Annie, thank you so much for coming on the program today. Tell us kind of the condition that you were in when you, when you first started seeking some help. I actually went to church my whole life to a wow. certain denomination where I was taught that God was always angry at me and I had to perform everything and I really didn't believe God loved me and so from a very young age I was very promiscuous mm -hmm. and that ended up becoming you know a lifestyle that I chose right. got a regular job after I left high school and started prostituting myself mm -hmm. escorting in Hawaii and then I ended up going back to Minnesota and then to Las Vegas eventually met a guy that I thought was my boyfriend was my pimp and I stayed in the sex industry in Vegas full-time 11 years Wow. So um, in, that, in that lifestyle, I was raped, beaten, um, scarred, you know, kidnapped. I got hooked on drugs the 10th year. Wow. I was actually type A personality. If I do something, it's 100%. Yeah. So when I got addicted, um, it just took over my whole life. And, you know, the shame associated with prostitution is so deep. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, you know, most women that do this are sexual abused. I was sexually abused as a child right. by a very close friend of mine, not a family member. So it's a little different than you. Right. But I was traumatized by that and I could not heal from it. And so I thought that if I could embrace the world, like, you know, all the TV stations with, you know, the magazines that teach you that if you have this, you're gonna do better and you're gonna right. love your life better. If you have cars, jewelry, <laughs> the face, the clothes, fell into that trap. Mm -hmm. But every time I put something in, in myself to fill it, it got empty, like a big black hole in space. And I basically hit rock bottom. I, I didn't have anywhere to turn, drugs was my answer. Mm -hmm. So nine months of intense cocaine addiction where I started smoking it. And I used to laugh at crack addicts, and here I was a crack addict. Wow. Um, the lowest of the low, just sitting there. And the last night I remember doing it, I just didn't want to live anymore. I, I felt like, what, what have I done? I haven't contributed anything good to society. Like, I just hated myself so much. And I took that hit, and I fell back, and I had a heart attack, and I went to the hospital. And I cried out to Jesus because I just remembered my mom told me if I ever got in trouble to say his name. And I said, Jesus, rescue me. And I, and I went to the hospital and I knew God heard my prayer because I survived. Yeah. The doctor said I wasn't supposed to. I had too much drugs in my system. So I got home and um, I couldn't sleep. And I knew I had prayed to God and I was like, God, you know, I... Where do I go from here? And I started watching the television. And of course, you popped up <laughs> late at night. And I was like, who is this crazy chick? You know, she's <laughs> speaking directly to me like you were talking to me. And she must have been a prostitute because she knows too much about me. <laughs> you know, just straight to my heart. It's like I, I just started to come alive. That's wonderful. And I started reading the Bible. And it was almost a year and a half before I went back to church. But the whole time I was watching you, and buying your books and giving to the ministry, I became a partner like right away. And I just was just so amazed that someone like you that didn't have the same exact background could minister to me. And you actually helped me love myself again with Jesus. Like when you said to the camera, did you know God loves you no matter what you've done? And it's like I sat in front of the TV and I, I, I never forget I got on my knees and I said, if it's true what Joyce is saying, then heal me. Wow. <laughs> because I want to feel loved again. And, and, you know, shortly after that, I started going to church. And I started feeling just a tug in my heart. I've got to get other books of yours to give to people, to girls. That's so cool. And that's what I've been doing. And then my ministry was born, Hookers for Jesus. And now at our house, we have a house for girls. And we have all your teachings just lined up in our library. That and is so great. we listen to it every day. And we listen to you on the TV plus the internet so God just really moved with being a partner and you being obedient to God and you know doing what you were called to do just spread the gospel with truth well you know hearing your testimony is the fuel that keeps me doing what I'm doing and I'm hoping and praying that it's the fuel that ignites our partners to keep doing what they're doing and also encourages other people to become partners and you know we're not doing this just because we want to get somebody to send money to the ministry. But the truth is, is without any kind of finances, that program wouldn't have been there for you. Now, I'm sure God could have used somebody else because you cried out to him and he's going to meet your need. But that was there available to you in the middle of the night, coming from someone who, although I didn't live a life of prostitution, I'm very amazed that I didn't because my father started sexually abusing me when I was a little girl. And I've often thought, 
how awesome it was that God kept me from that because that would have just been a very easy transition to go into that. And, you know, I've discovered, like you said, that it was amazing to you that even though I didn't live that life, I could still minister to you. And, and God has taught me that pain is pain, no matter where it comes from or how you get it, especially that thing of no self-worth yeah. and shame and blame and feeling like that you're rejection. unloved, just, rejection, yeah. that you're worthless. And the thing that's so exciting to me about your testimony is that you needed help, you received healing, but now you're helping somebody else. And I think so many people just need help and get it, but then they never really reach out to other people. And that's how you really keep the message alive and keep it going. You reach out to other people. I just want people to understand that are watching today that this is a whole group of humanity that we need to try to help. The Bible says, pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send out laborers into the harvest. We need the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest, not just people that can do something financially, but people that will get involved and actually do something to help people. Yeah, you can't just put them in a home and expect them to get better. They need to grow. They need to, you need to go to the root of the problem, which is the, the pain from their past. One of the things that we are involved in now, which I'm really happy about, you know, I really believe that we can't just see a situation and say, oh, that's a shame. You know, that's not justice, and God is a God of justice, and he wants us to do what you're doing. He wants us to work to make wrong things right. So you were in a situation that was wrong. You were being treated wrong, beaten, raped, abused, lied to, your self-image destroyed. And as you received healing, then you reached out to help somebody else. And so I really believe that, that we have to work for justice. So I've made a commitment that I'm no longer just going to say, oh, that's a shame. Somebody needs to do something. <laughs> I think that's one of the greatest tragedies. Yeah, it is. You know, and even for people, maybe you're watching today and you're thinking, wow, that, that's a mess, man. Somebody needs to do something. Well, you need to ask yourself what your part can be. You got out. You said one of your clients got you out. But he didn't know how to get you healed. No, he didn't. You know, he wanted to help you, but he thought just giving you an alternate lifestyle of money and things would help you, but that still didn't do anything yeah. for the hole in your soul. Exactly. It got bigger. <laughs> yeah, it just got bigger. Yeah. And so there's so many people out there that need somebody to be with them. And, you know, I think a lot of times when we're looking for a ministry, what about just the ministry of being there? Right, right. Time is <laughs> priceless. Yeah. The time you spend with each girl, you, you can't even put a price on it because they need that special time, the time they never had when they were younger. You quickly became a partner. And can you just tell us why you did that and how it's affected your life and why you think it's so important? I, I feel that it's so important because if I could get set free, these other women could. And when I started giving, you know, back to the ministry and, you know, getting your books and getting multiple copies of them, um, the transformation in the Bible studies that, we, that we're doing now and that we've been doing, I've seen their lives just change. And the light bulb goes on when they read, you know, your books and when we wa watch the teachings and, and we watch everything on the television. It's just changed my life to watch them get changed. The entrance of his word brings light. So when you talk about how, you know, our ministry is helping these people, it's really because our ministry is all about the word of God. You know, we're sharing the love of Christ with people. We're sharing the word of God. And the Bible does say you are the light of the world. Don't put your light under a bushel, which means, you know, you, you got you to gotta share this. You, you know, you have to tell people. And so God helped you, and now you're saying, come and help us take a light to a dark place to bring somebody else that's trapped in darkness into a place of hope. Absolutely. And there's one other thing I wanted to say, that the way you do your ministry is relatable to these women. Thank you. You, you can't just pick up a Bible and read it and understand that God loves you. Some, sometimes you need another person to come in and explain it mm -hmm. and explain how the word works. And that's what's happening with these books and, and the, you know, the teachings. It's like the lights going on in their heads because they're understanding the word of God because of the way that you teach it. Well, so really it's just so important. It, it, you're, like, you're like a gateway <laughs> to, to people in darkness. I mean, people that would never come to church. I was afraid of church when I left yeah. it. I didn't want to go back. They don't want to go back. But when they hear what you say about God and when they look up those scriptures that you show to teach, it's like they believe God loves them again. Well, that's so